sounds like a Italo Calvino book. Have you ever read anything by Italo Calvino? Yeah. yeah. Teletubbies? Yeah. No. Uh, no. Uh, no. I was like, what? I'm no, like, like uh, the Calvin <laughs> discount, there was a discount that went off to battle, and then he ended up getting cut in half. And half of them was good, half of them was bad, and they both fell in love and competed for the hand of a nun. So it's just like there's all these absurdities in it, but it so much expresses kind of the human condition, you know? And then he had like a, a knight that was just a suit of armor in Charlemagne's uh, army. He was just a suit of armor, had no soul. So he was really good with the bureaucratic processes within the army. He cleaned everything, he did the drills, but he had no soul, he had no heart. So it shows that he's trying to fight for humanity without having any concept of what humanity is. You know, it's kind of like you put these absurd situations together and then it just, it almost writes itself in a way because you, it's, it's there. It's like Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett. Uh -huh. He's on the same, same category there. Yeah. He's, he's, of the, don't ever forget the punk category to writing. And that's just the words, what if? You can take the craziest situations and just add a what if and run with it. Take headlines from the newspaper. We in the mystery writing world do it all the time and just, what if? Once again, go have lunch with Malice in Memphis. And <laughs> it, is, it, is a, it is an experience. We like um, to have um, detectives come and show us the very gory crime scene. Um, photos, and then we go out and eat barbecue. <laughs> That's what we do. But they like to write about that stuff. And so, find a picture. I mean, it can be anything that inspires you. Um, it, it, it could be a picture. It could be a song. Um, it could be something on the news. Anything can inspire you. And then write the what if. And then take it off from there. Just let your mind go. Do you have any questions? We've covered so much. I want to make sure we stop. Anything we haven't that. covered that you would might have a question about. Um, you guys talk about word counts all the time. Is it expected from publishers that you're going to hit a certain word count per book? Well, you get into the economics of the book. Um, if you're an unknown author and you have just written your 250,000 word, you know, ode to Tolkien, mm -hmm. and you have. You, you have a tone that is going to be this big, and the hard cover is going to sell for $49.95, and the soft cover is so big it cannot sell for anything less than $24.95. No one's going to buy your book. So it right. comes down to cost per word, basically, to produce the book. Yeah, well, it's cost per page. Sure. Uh, it's, it's basically, it's your cost per page. Um, you know, your, your book sizes, you've got a, your, your basic <clears throat> mini, your tiny book, what we consider your, your paperback, is your paperback is a $10 book, and it's a disposable book. It's terrible paper, it's a terrible mm -hmm. cover, it's small, tiny fonts, but it's a $10 book. Uh, your next size up is your trade paperback, which is what you see here on the table. These are basically the same size as a hardcover, but they have a soft cover on them. They're generally a little better paper. They're generally durable books, but about 90,000 to 100,000 words is gonna be about a $14.95 book at Barnes & Noble. So, the little bitty baby cheap book that's going to fall apart in a couple of years is 10 bucks. The good durable book is $14.95, and the hardcover to a book about the size is going to retail at about $29.95, which is, again, about an appropriate price. So, when you're, you know, you can't price yourself out of the market of, you know, if you're doing all the collected works of Edgar Allan Poe under one hardcover, yeah, I mean, you've got a 600-page book that can sell for $49.95. And it's going to be, it's, yeah, and that has kind of a reference material. Yeah, but, I mean, you, but, you're, but, you're, yeah. but you know, you're not buying the, the greatest works of Bob. You know, you're, you're buying a book that somebody's going to have to study, somebody's going to, you know, there's, there's a utilitarian or academic use for that kind of book. Um, just, oh, you know, yes, Tolkien wrote big books. Yes, I mean, you know, there are people out there that write, ooh, just write some really big books, but in the last 10 years, the economics of the shipping and the paper and all of that kind of gets you into word counts. Now, you really get into word counts when you get into of uh, generalized publication, magazines. So if you're writing for Arthur C. Clarke, and he says, I need a 3,200-word story, he means within a plus or minus of 5%. He needs 3,200 words, because that's exactly how much space he has in this magazine for your story. So you, 
you get really good at targeting exactly, you know, of, I wrote a, oh gosh, I wrote a story under a lot of parameters, parameters called anadelectophobia. And that is the story that begins with, you know, two nuns and a vampire, but the duck hunters are on walking to a bar. <laughs> and the story has to meet very specific targets within it. It has to include anadelectophobia, which is a real disease. It has to uh, include legalepsy, which is a real disease. It also has to be 1,800 and... I mean, 1,982 words long. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it had to be exactly 1,982 words long because anadelectophobia is the fear that somehow, someplace, somewhere, you're being watched by a duck. <laughs> and the story had to be... I never, never want to write another one of these stories again. Which if you've ever been attacked by a duck, it's a totally reasonable fear. <laughs> <laughs> it's not to be joked about. Having raised ducks and Canadian geese, yes, <laughs> you, you learn how to slap real hard. <laughs> they're bitter animals. You, you, oh, they're, they're evil, bitter creatures. They really are. Um, but, you know, it, because the story was so specifically targeted for an exact purpose, mm -hmm. it had to hit that exact word count. Or the, you missed the joke that Big Duck is watching you. <laughs> what, so word count, so let's talk about that a minute. So there's short stories. There's, there's magazine articles, there's short stories, there's novellas, there's novels, and then there's the over-the-top novels like the Terry Brooks and the Tolkien, which are really huge mm -hmm. tomes. Tomes, you you got to have the base. you got to be known. you got to be able to do it. Publishers don't want to take a chance on that. Right. Um, novellas sell, yes. So the novels, so short stories with the right thing. Some people will write a collection uh, like I'm writing on the side a couple short stories which are kind of like the backstories of different characters that I can then throw into a book later. Um, so I could do that. Or I could go and I could submit them to anybody's anthologies or writing competitions, whatever. So there's a use for those short stories um, even if you don't put them into a book. You could you know, try to get them into a book, but you could just use them for competitions and, and practice for writing. So but even those, they'll have like rules for short stories, like a 9,000 word one or a 15,000 word one. A lot of times they'll tell you we need short stories between 5,000 and 9,000 words. Right. So they don't go by pages, they go by words. Words. Right. Well, keep in mind, so. it depends on the size of the book, because if we're right. going to do three different sizes, again, your, your basic little paperback uh -huh. is take a normal sheet of paper and fold it over in half, and that's a five and a half by, you know, it basically, it's a little tiny book, and we're going to use a size 10 font, which is going to totally change the entire pagination of the book. So the little bitty paperback might be 300 pages, but the trade paperback size of it may be uh, 290 pages. And you start getting into books, too. You start looking at conversations. And so the longer the conversation, then there's more word count. But if all of these were short snippets back and forth, well, I said so, no, you said so, I said so, those are all little short sentences that's not going to have the same word count. But it takes the same number of lines. Okay. So how many words usually word count for something this size, the trade paperback? About 90,000 to 100,000. This is about 92. Yeah, this is about 102,000. How many pages was it? Let's see, 332 pages, and it's about 100,000. That's 300, that's 347 pages. Yeah, plus all the uh, extra pages. Because keep yeah. in mind, you have your that's intro, true. your setup, your copyright yeah. page, all And the all those other there. pages that go with it, besides the count of the actual pages that you're reading. Okay. Because you got to have your opening, your copyright page, your dedications, maybe an acknowledgement at the back. Chapter separations. Um, Okay. How much did they gutter? The, how much did they gutter it? How much the size of the header, the footer, the outside indexing? So there's a there, there is, as you tell, there's just a massive amount of tech that goes into making a presentable, readable book. These are probably the most common ones, right? Yeah, trade paperback That's is kind now of what the bread and butter of the book industry. I'm finding this more and more. I'm finding more this size now when I go into say a Barnes and Noble than I am the old-fashioned trade, you know, street paperbacks that you can see growing up. Yeah, these are six by nines, which is pretty much your standard, pretty much a standard book size. The others, that some people have referred to them as mass media, the smaller paperbacks. They're smaller, but they're thicker. Right, right. I'm gonna call 
those beach books. Beach yep. books, yeah. Yep. So from an industry perspective, how many publishers actually handle the printing in-house, or is that typically farmed out and they're handling the formatting and the recording? Uh, I'd say none. Yeah. If you have any sense. Yeah, right. Of why would you? Why would you need that kind of pain? A lot of eggs um, in the basket, yeah. Uh, almost every book out there is produced through either a mass printing outside the U.S. or they are printed the dead, oh, the terrible word, oh, they hated this word for 20 years, <gasps> print on demand. Uh, but, you know, outside of a megalithic hit where they're going to print 200,000 copies of something, almost any book today comes off of of a high speed electro, uh, I forget the, the entire name of the process, but uh, basically HP invented a way of printing the book and the cover, marrying them up, doing the gluing and everything's automated. So, you know, the old days of, you know, back stitching and all that stuff, that just takes place in boutique situations. And don't get too excited if somebody goes, hey, Barnes & Noble wants to buy 20,000 of your books, get prepared for some to come back. There must be a return policy with all of these outlets because if your book doesn't sell, they want to return and get their money back. Sure. So, caution. So if a, if a buyer like a Bunt Noble or whoever it is, say they, they're working with you and the publisher and they say, hey, we want 20,000 copies, how is that typically paid out? Is that a consignment arrangement? Do they pay up front and then there's a return policy? Oh, account? that's a horrifying arrangement. Um, <laughs> Generally, what's going to happen is the publisher is going to foot the bill for really? the books, which is so you're going to pay to get them produced. You're going to oh yes. Pay them to get them shipped. You're yes. Going to pay to market it. Yes. You're going to pay to brand the author to yes. create some excitement over yes. it. It's a new one. Yes. And then you're going to eat that. And and, sit on that and Barnes and Noble has the right to return any or all of the books at any time in any condition. They're the biggest player around. Well, we're they, are, they, they are still the 740 pound gorilla. Yeah. They are no longer the 8,000 pound gorilla. They're no longer the 800 pound gorilla, but they're still the biggest monkey Which in the park. Which is still a big gorilla. It's still a yeah, big yes. gorilla. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you, you, ugh, when you get into the marketing distribution of your books, uh, Amazon.com is your biggest distributor, and that is sell and print on demand. Sweet. Which is why. So Amazon is. You know, Amazon is your happy is your happy place because they may buy books four or five at a time, but they may buy four or five books every day. Sure. So what kills you with Amazon.com is the shipping. But then you also get the preview aspect on like the Kindles through Amazon to where more people right. can jump in. Right. You have Kindle, in. you have Nook, you have yeah. eBook, you have you have all these other uh, sources. Plus you have Audible. So you have a variety of products that you have to make. And keep in mind, each book that you make is a different product. So a trade paperback is not the same thing as a hardcover. The content of your trade paperback or your hardcover is not exactly the same thing as the content of your ebook. Because an ebook, there is no such thing as an ebook. It's a website. It is, it is a computer program containing the contents of your book. So a lot of people get confused. They're like, "Oh, well, I can just click the button right here, and it says it'll make my ebook for me." No, it'll take your book and it will add an ebook format to it, but it's not going to index it. It's not going to do all of the wonderful things an ebook is supposed to do. An ebook has to be programmed. It can't be a PDF that's just set up. And a lot of people just send a PDF up and call it an ebook, and then they wonder why it doesn't sell. Because it's not a real ebook. It's not indexed. You can't search. You can't move the letters around, all that kind of stuff. And, and while we're talking about ebooks, we might to talk about the, the lovely, uh, I bought it and shelved it. Um, the, the biggest thing you can do to help a, re a writer that you enjoy is to get online, to read a book, buy it, read it, and review it. And Amazon won't even let you review it on Amazon if you haven't spent enough money on Amazon. So you, you have the outlet of Goodreads and places like that where you could then at least help the author with that. Um, well, the reason they stopped that was people weren't reading the books, books. and you would just get people just, just buy them. trashing books. Oh, no, there were people oh, that were just trolls. Trash, yeah. They, they were just, too. oh, yeah, this book sucks. Oh, yeah, this book sucks. And it was like, obviously, you have nothing else better to do with your life but sit around and review books you haven't read. So. But the other thing is that if you, many people go, they have great intentions, and family and friends, we're going to buy it. Well, maybe they buy it, 
but they never read it and they never review it. So while they gave you a little bit of money, they didn't help you grow. Because until they read it and review it, they don't help you grow it. Because the algorithms that run all of these sales sites depend on reviews. So e-readers, I've talked to so many people that are e-readers, they go, yeah, I have a couple hundred books in my computer. They haven't read any of them. They don't, they don't have any time to read or they just bought them or they even got them on the freeze. Oh, they're the free giveaways. I've got a hundred books I got for free. But they didn't do what the author intended, which was if I sell, if I give the book away free, you're going to read it and review it, which is going to help me in the algorithm so that I can sell more books. Which is one of the downsides to the proliferation of e-books because there might be a lot of buzz created about the author and the story. So a bunch of people went and got the e-book, it registers on their sale count, but nobody actually read it or knows anything about it. Mm, correct. So, gives them a short-term gain, yeah. but not the long-term. Because you buy that, and you're kind of committed to it. You know, you got it. You, 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 you're it's sitting around the house. You've got right. it. There's uh -huh. an accountability factor there because you can't just close the app. It's sitting there. You know, you've had it for three weeks and haven't cracked it open yet. Less well, less or, you know, unless it's the exact size that you needed for that kitchen table. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, you know, even then, now you're putting the book to use. So uh, the, the Kindle Unlimited thing or the KDP plan or whatever it is, it, it depends on how many pages are moved, how many time, it, how oh, many right. pages are actually where you have to swipe through, and you only get paid for the number of pages they they read, and it's pennies. Oh, that's spooky and brilliant. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, it can be fairly, yeah. Big Brother's watching. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> the Big Duck's watching. Yes, it, it, can, it can, you know, uh, when you get a book that's doing really well, it's exciting. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like watching a lottery count. It's like, oh, oh, I got 40 hits today, I got 50 hits today, I got 60 hits today. And when you're not hot, it's 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 pretty like, okay, let's cross the river up to, you know, you kind of really get, uh, so you're like 30% of the people that bought the book didn't make it past the first 30 pages, and now you're, you're so I'm sure it's to that extent almost that you're. Oh, it's even shorter now. It's even shorter now. Uh, it's amazing how little, you know, how uh, the the distance people will get into these things. Now, you're still your hardcore readers, your hardcore readers, the people we just love, people that build this library. Hardcore readers burn through books. Oh my gosh, they read so hard and so fast. They they chew through two or three books a week. Oh, it's like her. She, she kills it. She kills. Oh, yeah. okay, we'll get 15, See, 16 books, and oh, then yeah. next week she's ready. Hardcore, man. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We live. We live for you. Yeah. Um, we can't write fast enough. Yeah, and it's bad because I'm not real good about returning them on time. The library appreciate that. I think we could probably fund a, a renovation of the library within about a year and a half. <laughs> you, you can renew your books if you're not finished. I'm, I'm just really bad about a lot of certain things like that in my personal life, so uh, yeah, irresponsible, I guess, right? yeah, personally. But anyway.